this is not everything I wanted it to be, but it is going to be what it is. Um, and to start off, I'm going to kind of explain that, where uh, I'm going to occasionally through this set reach in here and make some transitions happen. And that's because of the heat. But now that I've ex excused myself, I wanted to, to talk to some thing I've been thinking very hard about um, recently. Uh, and it's a big word, um, silence, and it's, it's fitting to talk about silence with a bunch of radios in front of you, um, radio silence. Silence. So this is what silence means to most of us. And this is actually an agreement in between this thing in my hand and a bunch of stuff in the truck to symbolize silence to us. Silence is an, a, an agreement between two things. In a way, silence is a lie that your brain tells your consciousness, that your senses and what's behind silence is something a little bit more true. It's behind silence is noise. Noise is kind of like a, a cosmic background truth. But I'm talking about things in this way to build up what I've been thinking about which is silence as as an agreement of sorts, and silence as a falsehood. This radio silence is something that we've heard in our lives every once in a while. And what happens when this agreement is broken and this lie of silence becomes exposed?
out. I want to spread my ashes on serious feet. No. I don't want to be a being no more. No. I don't want to be a being no more. I hope you are learning to die. I hope you're doing the work of dying because you deserve, you deserve to join me in the sky. I, I don't want to be a bee no more. Me, I am done with my earth time. I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm going Saxophonist Jimmy Farr with Oliver Nelson's big band, something called Soul Street. Rob Whippy, WBGOFA, and uh, on the next conversation with Alan Walker, Ken Thompson, the first of 2013, and became the first African American director of Brooklyn, the third. He's been overturning all the sentences of key issues of change. You can hear Ken Thompson on WBGO tomorrow morning on Conversations with Alan Walker at 7. This is music from Thomas John Hicks, that is for the great king. symbolic material capability dictating the shape of reality and abstraction rules in knowledge and domination rules in practice. The sun worshiping wizards mediating the revolutions in the night dream of post-industrial solutions where their best machines are made of sunlight, ubiquitous and invisible, precisely why they're so deadly and a matter of intent human pain, where the diseases evoked by these clean war machines are minuscule encodings of antigenic alienation in the realms of boundary confusion and pure number and pure spirit. They protect potent secrets and interference from nuclear scores where small is not so much beautiful as preeminently dangerous and irreverent on our God of consciousness and its simulation where conscious is we're conscious of our failures and lapsing in boundless difference, giving up on the task of making true partial connections where some differences are playful and some differences are the poles of the world historical system of violent domination of your body and my body and our body. Does not end at the skin.
So let's talk about silence versus noise in this particular framework where silence is a lie that is simply a mutual agreement in between two parties agreeing on a, transmitting a symbol and noise being the background state of reality, of the scaffolding upon which we carve everything else. That would give us grounds to argue against the people that think silence is sexy or golden and talk about silence when not mutually agreed upon to be a bad thing to be possibly shameful, at most, or at, at best, simply irrelevantly denying the, um, well, within this construction, the framework of reality. Okay.
wanted to hold this thing. All right, another round of applause for Ed. Yeah! And for Jacob and Beno, who played pre four. Yay! Oh my God! And then up next, we have Joe DiNardo and Benjamin Greenberg. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> and we have Masher over here, um, Birch and Brenna, who invite you to come over and um, explore the rug. Yay! <laughs> I want to thank everyone who came out tonight. This is a really uh, warm and loving uh, just reception, really. Um, for Scott and myself, we have um, turned our news van into a residency, and um, Ed has, is our first resident, and he's built this instrument, um, which is within the van, uh, as a permanent instrument now to be used uh, for whoever comes in next and to be used in many different ways. And it really can be used in many different ways. Um, so we thank you so much, Ed, and um, it really has been a wonderful experience to just kind of outfit this for video and sound exploration, and we're really excited to see what happens in the future, and um, thank you all for being a part of this. Yeah. <laughs> thank you to Clock Tower for broadcasting this live, uh, and for uh, believing in us, and thank you to Pioneer Works as well, who, uh, yeah, absolutely um, believe in our madness. So <laughs> we are forever grateful to you guys, yeah. Um, and to Franklin Furness, who also, I mean, you guys somehow all drank the Kool-Aid, and it's great. <laughs> so thank you very much, yeah.